in the heart of the Latino community, which sits right next to the little village. Um, I was reminiscent that when I was a young man in my in, back in the 1970s, there was only one attorney that would come up on the old Channel 26 uh, TV, Bob Ogren. Uh, give it a few years and look around the room. Uh, we want to make a statement for the Latino community today, que no están solos, que estamos a su lado. And so we want the Latino community to understand that you're not alone. This is not the old days anymore. There are a lot of us that either are immigrants or are sons and daughters of immigrants, and we became lawyers so that on a day like today, we could speak on your behalf. And that's what we're doing here today. I want to acknowledge a couple of folks here that have been instrumental in putting this together with their assistance uh, from my staff, uh, Ed Santiago and Jaime Guzman. And I especially want to acknowledge the help uh, from the Hispanic Lawyers Association. Uh, we come a long way, and thank you for all the work that you do. Uh, I want to acknowledge Federico Rodriguez, uh, who is here as a representative of the uh, American Bar Association the Commission on Hispanic Legal Rights and Responsibilities. Rick Estrada is here from the Illinois Latino Agenda. Well, Rick Estrada. Karina Ayala Bermejo, Instituto de Progreso Latino. And we also come uh, with the support I know from a lot of our folks in the community that have been doing this kind of work for many years, and the business community. Uh, we have a representative today uh, from um, the Vice President and General Counsel uh, from Tampico. Uh, where are you? Jose. Pedro. 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 Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate that. And as, we, as I read a statement to you, uh, I, I do want to remind the media not to be so quick on turning the page to the next story. Because the only way how we're going to protect the unnecessary loss of lives in the communities of color, the Latino community, is if you keep the eye, if you keep the focus on the story and on the facts. And so that's why we're here today. Neighborhoods in the city of Chicago are filled with thousands of children like Adam Toledo. Adam Toledo's case, as tragic as it is, is only a symptom of a larger systemic issue that has plagued the Latino community for far too long. Latinos, like their African-American neighbors, have always been on the receiving end of poorly conceived police law enforcement policies and practices. Far too long interaction between Latinos and the police result in disproportionate stops, harassment, misguided arrests, in prosecution for minor offenses. And as the case of Adam shows, those interactions often bring fatal consequences to our community residents. The disproportionate arrest and prosecution of race in the Latino community have conspired to denigrate the good character of the overwhelming majority of our community members who work hard every day to improve the quality of life in the community. It is therefore imperative that the Chicago Police Department must do more to improve the way they approach law enforcement in our communities to minimize unjustified and tragic outcomes. The killing of Adam Toledo at the hands of the police brings to the forefront the pressing needs to address the Chicago Police Department enforcement policies and practices in the Latino community. We cannot leave it up to the police department to investigate itself and expect meaningful reforms. That has never worked in the past, and it's not going to work now. In addition, we call on the police department, and this is important, the fraternal order of police and the media and the public to stop vilifying Adam 
and the Toledo family throughout this process. The family has suffered enough and must be left in peace to mourn the loss of the child. As the family continues to grieve, the Department of Justice should deputize the U.S. Department of Civil Rights to conduct an investigation to determine whether the constitutional civil rights of Adam Toledo were violated. But we also need an, an impartial arbiter, and we are calling on the Justice Department and the U.S. Attorney Mary Garland to conduct an investigation into the circumstances that led to and resulted in the death of 13-year-old boy, Adam Toledo. We are specifically asking that that investigation should focus on the following three points. Number one, establish clear procedures and policies outlining the circumstances under which police officers can engage in food chases with criteria to discipline officers who do not follow the procedures. The training guidelines currently in place, a five-page single-space training bulletin, are confusing at best. So much so that even the mayor, Lori Lightfoot, has acknowledged that such procedures must be changed. Number two, there must be clear procedures and policies governing the interactions between police and children, especially when lethal force is used. No more Adam cases. The police video of the shooting of Adam case shows a terrified 13-year-old boy running from the police disposing of what appears to be a gun, and then complying with the officer's commands, including stopping, turning around with his empty hands raised in the air, and then getting shot in the chest. Adam obeyed the commands of the officer. Yet, he was shot in the chest and died in the alley a minute later after he was shot. This is a tragedy that could have and should have been prevented had the police department had clear procedures governing the use of lethal force against our children during food chases. Number three, establish clear procedures and policies setting forth the circumstances under which police officers can engage in car chases in densely populated neighborhoods. This is especially the case when the offense involves minor traffic infractions, such as the failure to activate a turning signal, a broken tail light, displaying hanging items from the rear view mirror, and playing loud music. These minor infractions cannot be used as a pretext to engage in high-speed races through our neighborhoods that endanger everyone in the community. Last year, two innocent bystanders died as a result of these chases. One in the Pilsen Little Village of uh, pedestrian that affectionately was known in the Little Village community as El, Hombre, El Señor de los Cacahuates. Uh, a car chase ensued apparently because the driver had a non-working turning signal in a faulty mirror. Uh, Mr. Almazan, the pedestrian, got killed during the foot chase when the vehicle that was being chased lost control, pinned him against the wall at a Walgreens on 26th and Pulaski. Mr. Almazan died later from his injuries. Not long ago, also last year, another woman, a young mother, died during a police chase when the patrol car that was chasing the offending vehicle crashed against the vehicle driven by the young mother and killed her instantly. Only through an investigation conducted by the Justice Department designed to create clear policies and procedures to govern police tactics in the community can bring a semblance of faith and trust in the Latino community. The policies and procedures that result from an investigation must then be incorporated into a consent decree with judicial oversight to ensure that there are meaningful enforcement and implemented. Faith and trust in the police department are in short supply in the Latino community. 
an objective investigation conducted by the Justice Department will send a message to our community that this time is different, that this time their voices will be heard, and that Adam's death will not be just another sad statistic added to the ongoing death count. Moreover, the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, must accelerate the city's compliance with the existing consent decree, requiring long overdue police Chicago department reforms and immediately end foot pursuits that result in fatalities like Adam's case. Just two weeks ago, independent monitor Maggie Higley <clears throat> filed a report indicated that the city had failed to meet all of the 315 requirements. Particularly disturbing, as the report notes, is that the Chicago Police Department failure to engage with communities, particularly how the Chicago Police Department understands and discerns the differences and nuances among community engagement and community partnerships and community relationships is lacking. Now more than ever, the city and the Chicago Police Department must commit to working with the communities most impacted by police misconduct in order to implement lasting systemic changes. Perhaps if there were a greater sense of urgency to bridge the gaps that exist between the CPD and the Latino community, Adam would still be alive today. But we want you to know that Adam's case did not start a minute before he died, or five minutes or three minutes be before the foot chase started. And so these are significant reforms that we're calling on the city to be implemented. The Latino youth, especially those returning to the Chicago public school system in Little Village classrooms after the videos release of Adam's shooting, will need increased support services and safe spaces for the last quarter of the school year. We demand more counselors and social workers to provide services to these traumatized youth. With the current student population across the Southwest High School, there is a need for 500 more social workers and 300 more school counselors. The Latino lawyers demand that Mayor Lightfoot and the CEO, Janice Jackson, target funds in excess of $80 million to the Little Village community and other Latino community schools from the close to $2 billion received from the federal relief in order to meet the needs of our children. In addition, we need more street outreach workers and social workers so that we don't have to increase the workloads and our current efforts and make the work effective and lasting. Our teenage youth needs jobs year-round. We need to go behind the one summer in Chicago. We need a partnership between public and private entities to create these job opportunities for our most at risk youth. On behalf of the Hispanic Lawyers Association and the ABA's Commission on Hispanic Legal Rights and Responsibilities, and all of those who are present here, I want to thank you for being here. Lastly, I want to say one quick thing, is that Adam's case should not be forgotten. And the reason for that is that these tragedies have a high price on all of us. All we are asking is for a little respect and dignity. And as the consent decree implemented two years ago noted, to respect the sanctum of human life. A little respect and dignity in our community is going to go a long way to save millions of dollars that the city pays in jury awards, settlements, legal fees, the cost that it has in the loss of human lives. And at the end of the day, we all win. The police officers will be safer working in the community if they have a good working relationship with the community. And as Benito Juarez say, el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz. The respect for the rights of others is peace. Uh, I want to open it for questions and for anyone that would like to have any comments.
El respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz. Como dijo Benito Juárez. Well, yeah, Benito Juárez, he was a contemporary of Abraham Lincoln. And uh, he, in Espanol, well, bueno, Benito Juárez, el Benemérico de las Américas, como todos ustedes saben, uh, es reconocido por una frase muy célebre que dice, el respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz. Es lo que pedimos en la comunidad latina, un poco de respeto. Ya basta, esta ocasión no vamos a agachar la cabeza y seguir caminando. Para eso estamos aquí nosotros. No vamos a permitir que den la vuelta a la próxima página y que siga como si nada hubiese ocurrido. Tiene que haber cambios fundamentales en la comunidad, en la relación que existe actualmente entre la policía y la ciudad de Chicago y nuestra comunidad latina. Es realmente la única manera de que puede haber paz en la comunidad. De otras maneras, este va a ser un verano muy largo y ya no queremos más tragedias en la comunidad. Tiene el alcalde, los legisladores, el departamento de policía, si viven los que viven en Wilmette, donde vivan en Lakeshore Drive, donde viven. Es nuestro interés como ciudadanos y seres humanos de demandar que todas las vidas humanas tienen que ser respetadas, que todos los seres humanos tienen que ser tratados con dignidad y que reconocer que cuando se violan los derechos constitucionales de uno de nuestros residentes, nosotros vamos a estar ahí como representantes de la comunidad para recordarles que no vamos a seguir permitiendo este tipo de atrocidades. If there are any questions for anyone, anyone would like to make any comments, please. Arturo, Arturo, is, is it your position that there are not enough Latino cops on the street, you know, uh, improving relationships in the neighborhood? Where, where do you see that? Well, you know, you know we're not going to litigate all the different complex issues here, socioeconomic and otherwise. I do remember that when I was a young attorney at MOL, the Civil Rights Organization, many years ago, That was one of the issues that we wanted to address. We wanted to make sure, in those days, the Mexican-American Police Association, you know, they were fighting to get more cops in there. We believe that it does make a difference if you are able to speak the language, to communicate with folks that you live in the community, and to interact with them. So yes, we, we do need, we, we need more uh, police officers that are in tune with the needs of the community, that can understand and can communicate directly with the community. Well, I, well, the consent decree that is in existence right now, it can always be improved. It can always be made better, and more importantly, even though we're calling for the implementation of a consent decree, specifically calling for those areas that I address, uh, because even the mayor recognizes that the pursuits, the policies on foot chases and car chases needs to be addressed. So, you know, we're following the lead of the mayor. We are calling her on it. We challenge her to stand by us and request the Justice Department. We are going to be working with uh, both of our senators here, with Congressman Garcia, and we are going to be sending a letter to the Attorney General outlining the reasons why this is a pressing issue in our community. And it must be addressed now. We cannot wait another month. We cannot wait another year. It needs to be addressed right now. Are you hoping that investigation is transparent? Are you hoping that the community is told what's going on? Well, transparency is the only way that things can work here, okay? You know, that's the reason why we mentioned in the statement uh, that, you know, we cannot trust the police department to investigate itself. It just doesn't work. So we need absolute transparency. There should be hearings in the community. There should be hearings from folks that have dedicated their whole life to improving their relationships within the community. Look, you know, there, there, there shouldn't be any enemies in this battle. You know, the battle is for equality. 
And how do we address that? We need to bring the resources that are needed in our community so that our youths are not wandering the streets at hours of the night, wondering, you know, what is, you know, that they have no future. We have to tell them that they have a future and those, and those resources must be brought to the community to make sure that they acknowledge that they have a future and so that whenever they go downtown, they don't look at downtown as being a faraway place that they'll never be able to work in an office or a place like that. Arturo, and if I could add, Karina Ayala Bermejo, um, I come today wearing many hats, but um, as a former president of the Hispanic Lawyers Association of Illinois, the statement that I want all youth watching right now to see is that all of these faces are Latino and that you, too, are supported not only by a community, but you can become anything that you wish to become. And that when you look at a mirror that has a face that looks like mine, that I hope you feel the love that we have for you, but the love you should have for yourself, that you too can be an attorney, you can be a judge, you can be whomever, and that the Latino faces are these two, I say to the media, to cover our stories of success. We are united in justice. We are united in our noble profession that if you want peace, you must seek justice. And we also know that at the federal level, the Justice and Policing Act is very important to fund and to pass. Resources in our community to address the long systemic inequities are critical, essential, now more than ever. And I ask those that are watching to contribute their part. We need role models. We need every effort. We need ambassadors for peace, ambassadors for justice, and we can't wait any longer. A ver. No hay problema. Me llamo Karina Yala Bermejo. Um, hoy estoy como abogada. Les quiero decir a todos los jóvenes que están viendo que estas caras que ven latinas somos abogados, somos jueces, somos líderes en la comunidad y que a veces se necesita un espejo ¿va? para realizar el potencial completo de ustedes. Es importante que sientan nuestro amor, que sientan que estamos aquí y que ustedes también pueden lograr cualquier sueño que tengan. Y también es importante que todos los que están viendo, que necesitamos más líderes, necesitamos que todos hagan lo que ustedes deben de hacer para que estas injusticias paren. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I wanted to acknowledge the presence of uh, Alderman Mike Rodriguez, who was kind enough to join us. And, uh, and again, we just want to let you know that we appreciate your support and that we are united in this. Uh, one of Federico, please come. I, I did forget to mention that the representative from the Hispanic Fire Association, of one of the representatives, Mr. Yes, Juan Morado, is yes, here. We have the president of the Hispanic Lawyers Association right by you. Uh, good morning, uh, Federico Rodriguez, um, a commissioner with the American Bar Association's Hispanic um, Commissioner on Legal Rights and Responsibilities. Um, our mission is really to support initiatives that promote and help lawyers achieve what they need to do to help and assist the community. So this falls within our wheelhouse. Uh, I think we're extremely proud of this effort. I think that. Um, uh, this is a very unique moment indeed, as, as uh, Arturo has pointed out. Uh, and there are indeed leaders here. The leaders are in, 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 uh, in the making. Um, I, we've seen the media, for example, Adam Toledo, I've seen the criticism that, well, the, the, the officer was a hero because he shot him. This kid was going to grow up to be a, a nothing. How do you know that? How can you predict the future? How do you know that? So my answer is, if you're so convinced as to the future of Adam Toledo's was, then Give me the winning lottery ticket because I want to retire. You cannot know what the future is. Absolutely not. So we, but the problem here is we need to create these opportunities for these young people. Calling upon um, uh, the, the powers that be to, to give us the funds necessary. The, the, the social workers are very important. I know that um, I, I have a brother-in-law. I have family who are, are teachers. I have family who are in law enforcement, by the way. My brother is in law enforcement. And he understands these issues as well. So promoting and giving to the community the, the support that it needs through the funding, uh, what we can do legally, we will. But this is really an effort from everyone. Um, would you like me to say something in Spanish? Yes, please. <laughs> 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 la pregunta es necia. La pregunta es necia. 
Um, I wanted to point out Benito Juarez, who you mentioned, was a lawyer, just so you know as well. Um, bueno, este, buenas tardes, Federico Rodríguez, eh, comisionado con la, con la, barra, con la Asociación de, de, de Abogados Nacionales, estoy con la Comisión de Derechos uh, Legales, este, eh, y nos interesa mucho uh, lo que está pasando en este caso. Queremos, nuestra misión es apoyar todo tipo de iniciativas este, para promover el bienestar del, del público, eh, promover el sentido eh, cívico que existe también. Este, nos interesa mucho que haya fondos, eh, como se ha pedido, para apoyar a la comunidad, en particular en las escuelas. Darle oportunidad a estos muchachos, a estos jóvenes, de poder ser otra persona. Este, eh, Karina eh, señaló, por ejemplo, que nos vean, que se fijen a nosotros. Eh, yo soy un inmigrante, aunque mi mamá creció en Pilsen, sé que Karina también es inmigrante, Arturo es inmigrante, y aún así podemos llegar a ser eh, abogados, o sea, y eso es, y, y no fue fácil, pero estamos aquí para apoyarlos, estamos aquí para darles y alentarlos, proteger a los, a los próximos Adams, darles oportunidades, ser mentores para ellos. San Martín en el corner, ya lo tienen, así que no quiero... Yeah, I'll make it harder than them. I'll stand. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Michael Rodriguez, 22nd Ward Alderman. Um, you know, this is a very serious topic, and I just wanted to thank this group of attorneys uh, and legal advocates from our community, for our community. They're demanding justice for the Toledo family. They're demanding justice for Adam Toledo. And they're doing so in various ways. One, there's a legal route. The federal government should step in. I think Arturo has made the case as to why that is important. But secondly, and what's very much interesting in my point of view, is these leaders are calling for increased investments in our community so that Adam Toledo's prosper in our city, prosper in our neighborhoods. Um, I uh, thank you. I congratulate you for your advocacy. You have a willing partner in me. In one, making sure that we restore justice in our community. We restore justice in La Villita and La, and the Latino community throughout our city. But that too, that by restoring that justice, we also invest in our communities. Many of you were there on our Peace March Sunday, where you saw a field at Farragut High School that was dilapidated and needs significant resources. So I'm very happy to hear that call. Our schools need increased resources, more social workers and investments in teachers and teaching and in social workers in our, in, our, in our neighborhood. So thank you very much for that call to action as well. Brevemente en español, mi nombre es Mike Rodriguez, soy el concejal del Distrito 22 de La Villita, uh, y otras áreas de suroeste de la, de la ciudad de Chicago. Um, uh, agradezco a los abogados que están aquí, los que están apoyando a la comunidad de La Villita y las demás comunidades y familias como la, como la familia Toledo. Uh, merecemos justicia, la familia merece justicia, nuestra comunidad merece justicia y eso es lo que está pidiendo los abogados y los líderes que están aquí hoy y más que están a, 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 urgiendo es más involucración, más um, apoyo a nuestra comunidad de una manera financiera, de una, uh, una inversión a nuestras escuelas, a nuestros consejeros, y eso lo apoyo. Y muchas gracias por el apoyo, muchas gracias por estar aquí hoy en este día. Um, pero más que nada quiero que la familia, de, de, la familia de Toledo reciba la justicia que merecen. Gracias. Hi everybody, um, I'm Janice Lanini. I'm the president of the Hispanic Lawyers Association of Illinois. And I wanna echo what um, some of um, our members as well and uh, some of the community leaders have said that we need um, you know, resources for our community. Um, HLAI, um, as the acronym for the Hispanic Lawyers, um, is an organization made up of lawyers, but 
we also invest time and our mission is to create a pipeline for young um, Latinos to come into the legal profession. And as that, um, our mission statement, we support the efforts that are going on here today and we wanna call for action, um, as we mentioned, for creating more resources for our community and uh, to be able to um, let this strategy be the end of it, um, which we are hopeful that that can be the case. Um, I want to um, thank everybody, um, especially Arturo, for putting this conference together for a much needed uh, discussion on this. And uh, thank you all the members of the media for making time to, to come and address this issue. Um, en español también se los puedo decir, ja, mi nombre es Janet Lanini, soy la presidenta de la, la Asociación de Abogados de Illinois y yo también, como muchos de los presentes aquí, soy un inmigrante y quiero um, <coughs> agradecer a, a Karina por habernos recordado que tenemos que apoyar a nuestra comunidad y que todos la, los jóvenes en la comunidad se merecen una oportunidad. Y uh, desafortunadamente el joven Adam no tuvo esa oportunidad de crecer y de, y de desarrollarse. Como dijo Federico, no ha sido fácil ser abogados, pero todos los que nos escuchan en la comunidad pueden saber que nuestras caras se pueden identificar y saber que, que es posible. Muchas gracias.